Hallelujah. To God be the glory, to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the author and finisher of my faith. To the third part of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit that leads and guides each and every one of his children. Uh, to my pastor and his absent pastor, D.R. Lewis, to my greater Oak Grove family, and to all of God's children all over the world. It's just good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. <clears throat> the scripture this morning will be coming from the 24th chapter of Matthew, starting at the 36th verse to the 44th. And it reads, But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were so also with the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. Until that day, Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Verse 44, Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. The grass withers and the flowers are going to fade but the word of God will last forever. Let us thank the Lord. Our Father, our God, we come to you as humble as we know how, with heads bowed and contrite hearts. First and foremost, just to say thank you for allowing us to call on your holy name. Thank you for your grace and mercy. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord. But we wouldn't have access to any of that if it wasn't for your daughter and son, Jesus, who hung, bled, and died for a wretch like me, but on the third day he got up with all power in his hands. Father, forgive us of all our sins and transgressions. You said in your word that we sinned against you and you only, Lord. Now, Lord, we lift up this service. Touch the man of God. Touch his body, touch his mind, touch his spirit. Speak to him, Lord. And when it's all said and done, let someone come running up the aisle saying, what must I do to be saved? Believe in, into the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. Blessed be the name of our Lord from now until forevermore. It's a blessing to be in the presence of the Lord this morning because he is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of the glory because of what he has done, all because he reigns in your life. Join us for praise and worship. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign. Lord, every name. My God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign. Lord, every name. With power. With power and magic 
Good morning, Great Old Grove. Another day that the Lord has made. We thank God for another opportunity just to tell him thank you and for his grace and mercy for waking us up another day. Uh, I won't be before you long. Let's just go to the Lord in prayer. First of all, we thank Pastor Lewis in his absence for opportunity to stand in his sacred spot. Uh, then we thank God for just allowing us to be able to be on top of the ground, the ground not on top of us. Father God, we come to you in most humble manner. We know how thank you, Lord, for just another opportunity just to tell you thank you. You've been so kind and so good and so merciful. Lord, but we ask you to continue to bless in the way you see fit. Your word is blessed, so I'm not going to tell you to bless your word, but bless me for standing here, Lord. I stand here, but you sit me down and you stand up in me, O oh, Heavenly Father. Speak to your people, Lord. We thank you right now for all that you've done. Your word is true. Your word is forever lasting, Lord. And we thank you right now, Lord. While the blood is running warm in our veins, might not get another chance. Continue to bless our pastor in his absence. Bless his family, his son, his mom. Then we ask you to bless all the bereaved families, Lord, all across the land and country. Lord, now it's, it's your time, it's your hour, Lord. Uh, speak to your people in a mighty way. I pray this prayer in your darling son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Lord led me to Matthew chapter 24, uh, and it's a very familiar passage of Scripture. And we want to focus, uh, we're going to touch on a little bit of all of it. We want to focus on verse 44, which is the main one. It says, Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Just to tag this text today, I want to use a topic as, since we don't know when, let's get ready right now. The text reminds us that we don't know when he's coming back. But for over 2,000 years, people have been scratching their heads and wondering when Jesus is coming back. And then you got a crowd that's saying that Jesus ain't coming back because they don't believe. And then our text, the writer is Matthew. And Matthew, Matthew, Matthew uh, is writing and recording what Jesus actually has said. Verse 36 says, But of that day and hour no one know, not even the angel of heaven, but my Father only. And that should raise some questions. If Jesus don't know, and the angels don't know, but the Father only how do Jesus know all in all? Well, that's a mighty good question. See, when Jesus decided to come down here and, 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 and save a wretch like you and me, he gave up some of his supernatural powers. He's still Jesus, he's still man, and he's still 100% God. But he gave up some of his uh, spiritual limitations just to walk on this earth in the human form as man. And it's not that uh, he don't know, it's just what he gave up just to be like us so he can show us the way, the truth, and the light. So God the Father is the only one know how long he's going to be here, how long, how many days he's going to be here, how many years he's going to be here, how many seconds, minutes, and hours. But upon his return, the Father only know when he's going to come back. But the Bible tells us that he's going to come back on a cloud just like the cloud he left on. Okay. But Jesus told his disciples to be on watch for his return because he's coming back. He's coming back for the church without a spot or a wrinkle. And, and, and verse 36 just reminds us nobody knows. So if you don't know when he's coming back, are you getting ready? Are you preparing? Are you being watchful? Are you alert? And that's all that word being getting ready means. Be alert. Be ready. He can pop up at any time. Verse 37 says, But as the days of Noah were, so also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving marriages until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came, 
and took them all away, so also would the coming of the Son of Man. Are you sitting around doing nothing? Or are you preparing and getting ready? Are you sitting around in your lawn chairs on the beach with your monoculars looking like UFOs? Or are you getting ready? See, we, we get ready for a whole lot of stuff. We have to prepare weekly for our work, long week of work. We prepare and get ready for our, when we decide we're going to take a vacation. We repair for Friday. When Friday get here, we thank God it's Friday. I just got paid. <laughs> I'm getting ready to go out. All those things we prepare for and we forget about. We forget about that Jesus is coming back. And are we working for our, are we working in the harvest? Or are we just working to be on this side of the world? See, sports brings me up to sports. Football, basketball, and baseball. In order to be perfect, in order to be good, they prepare. In order to get to the championship, they prepare. In order to, to win the Super Bowl or win a ring, they prepare. Why? Practice makes perfect. Are you practicing what God told you to do? Are you practicing what you preach? Brings me to another question. Why do these teams huddle up? That's a good question. They huddle up because there's a play to be ran every time they break the huddle. Well, the same way with this Christian walking journey. Each team in football, basketball, baseball tends to huddle at different times. Well, the same way with us. We huddle at different times in prayer, talking to God. Why? So we can get the play that God wants us to run. That's why we huddle up. Talking to God gives us the play for the run the play for the affairs of everyday life. Because everyday life throws us challenges. Are you getting ready? You don't know when he's coming back. But his words say he is coming back. See, God gives us the play. Have God ever done anything for you? Have Jesus ever done anything for you? Well, the play in the hole is, if he done something for you, you ought to go tell somebody about Jesus. How good he is. How faithful he is. And everything that he's done for you. Why? Because somebody is waiting to hear your story. How good God been to you. How awesome Jesus is. How awesome and wonderful Jesus is. How he comforts you and rock you in the cradle of his arms. Are you aware that it's time out for play? We need to be about our father's business. We need to be working. We need to be watching. We need to be waiting. Because he is coming back. And the story of Noah, when he talks about that. My first point is we need to learn how to listen to God. How do you do that? You go to God in prayer. Learn how to listen to God. And the story in here, verse 38, 37, 38, 39, talks about how they uh, did not listen to Noah. They was eating. They was drinking. They was married. They was doing their own thing. And, and, and to a certain extent, nothing's wrong with doing that. But we can't lose our focus when we're walking for God on this Christian journey. And that when we're walking for God on this Christian journey, that means we got to stay focused. We got to be alertful. We got to be watchful. We got to be waiting on him because he's coming back. We got to work. We got to watch. And we got to be faithful. Why? Well, Isaiah helps us out. Because, you know, our ways is not his ways. No, 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 no. His ways are not our ways. Yeah. Isaiah tells us over in Isaiah 55, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither my ways are your ways, said the Lord. For as heaven is high as the earth, and as my ways higher than your ways, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Why people keep, why, what, what, what keeps the people from listening to Noah back in those days? What kept them? That's a good question. The common interest of life, eating, drinking, and marrying, and giving marriage. 
They lost best by living for the good. They lost best by living for their good. Their good. Not God's good, but their good. It is a dangerous thing to get so absorbed in the pursuit of life that we forget about Christ. It's real dangerous. Because without Christ giving up his life for us, we wouldn't be here today. Christ gave his life for you and I so we may have life and enjoy life, and we tend to forget about him. But he's coming back for that church without a spot or a wrinkle. So we need to be learning how to listen to God so we can carry out what he has for us. My second thought is we need to learn how to work and watch for God. Well, what do they mean? Learn how to work and watch for God is carrying out God's plan. He gives you the play when you talk to him in prayer. But the plan is to be carried out, to tell the dying world about a man named Jesus. We ought to be like that man that's a nobody, trying to tell everybody who can save anybody. But see, everybody ain't going. So I guess that's why we're in this turmoil. Everybody's not going. Listen to what verse 40 and 41 says. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. What that, that, that tells me, that tells me, that tells me that we got diff, two different kind of people in two different manner. The first thing, he talks about a man and a woman. But the second thing is that you have two different types of people. You have kernel-minded people, which is led by the flesh, and you have spiritual-minded people, which is led by the spirit. So whichever one you want to be, uh, it's your choice by being obedient to our Father. Learn to listen to him. Learn how to work and watch and wait on him. Because the harvest is ripe, but the labors are few. And we tend to forget about God in our everyday walk of life because we allow our bank account and, and the affairs of life to get us off track because as we walk this journey, this journey is not about us. This journey is about Jesus Christ. So Romans 8 and 5 through 9 helps us out because it says, For they that are after the flesh mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit mind the things of the spirit. See, you got to be obedient to the spirit. The flesh is going to lead you down the, the wrong way, but the spirit will lead you down a road of righteousness so you can be prepared for when he come back. We prepare for everything but the return of Christ. And it's getting late in the evening. The sun is going down. So we got to prepare for his return. And we got to be ready. We got to be working. We got to be watching. And the rest of that Romans 8 and 9 says, Because the kernel mind is, is enemies against God. For it is no subject that the law of God neither indeed can be. So then they are in the flesh cannot please God. When you're in the flesh, you can't please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so being, the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So if you don't have the spirit of Christ, you're not none of Christ's. If you got the spirit of the flesh, you the spirit, you have the spirit of the devil. So we got to be on point. We got to be on key. We got to stay focused. We got to listen. You know, we, we pray to God, but we don't want to sit back and listen. The people didn't listen to Noah. Noah preached is going to reign for about 120 years. They was laughing at him, drinking and having fun. Thought something was wrong with him. But Noah was following the spirit of God. That's what we got to do. We got to stay connected. Every morning you get up, you got to go to the hole and get the play. Go to the hole and get the play. The play is designed for you to carry out a certain purpose in life. And that's my third point. We got to learn how to be faithful and ready. First, we got to get, we got to stay, listen to God through prayer. Second, we got to, we, we got to, we got to learn how to watch and work. That's the plan. And lastly, we got to learn how to be faithful and ready. That's the purpose. Your purpose is being faithful and being ready for his return because he's coming back. And, and I want to be ready when he come back. 
I don't, I don't have everything right. I, I try to dot all my I's and cross all my T's, but I don't always get it right. But I'm striving to get it right. So I meet him in the huddle every morning. I meet him in the huddle sometime in the middle of the day. I, meet, I go back to the huddle late at night, and he's always there ready to lead me. Verse 42 says, Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house has known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken in. Therefore, you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Keep watching simply means being prepared by having a good, loving relationship with Jesus Christ. You can't be prepared and don't have a relationship with him. Uh, the relationship with him lines you up with his plan and his purpose. And, and you, gotta, you, you gotta build that relationship with him. And in order for you to build that relationship with him, stay in his plan, that's how you get the act of obedience. Because you are being led by the Spirit, by him. That's not hard, is it? Well, it can be because we got to be studious. You know how most of us got PhDs and college degrees and, and we, we would go to school and we, we, be faithful, we try to be faithful to, so we can pass the test to get our diploma, to get our uh, uh, four years of college in. Well, that's the way we got to be with God. He don't ask for much. Just to spend a little time with him. Have a little talk with Jesus. It'll make everything all right. Mm -hmm. Then the writer talks about a thief. You know, a thief come in unannounced. He's not going to give you a warning that he's coming back. Listen, we may be surprised when Christ comes back, but his return should not be a surprise and scary for the believers. For those of us who believe, it shouldn't be scary. It shouldn't be a surprise. Because we work, that's what we ought to be working for, his return. His, we, we, the word is telling us that he's coming back. Don't no man know when? Don't no man know the time, nor the date, nor the hour. But it warns us in our text that he is coming back. We ought to be excited about him coming back. I don't know about you, but I am. I'm excited when he come back. Because he's coming back. He's coming back for me. I don't know about you. He's on his way back, and I want to be ready. I want to be working. I want to be somewhere. I want to be listening for my name. See, we would, never, we would never know everything about God, but remember, when Jesus comes back, that's God's secret, but being prepared is all up to us. So we need to just love Jesus and God with all our heart, our mind, our soul, so we can learn to make the right choices in life and be ready since we don't know when he's really coming back. Over in, John chapter, over in John chapter 14, verses 1 through 3, the word of God says, Let your heart not be troubled. Believe in God, also believe in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. For if it was not so, I would have told you. I go away to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to go to, with me to myself, and there where I am, you may also be. See, love is what love does. God loved us enough that he gave his only begotten son. His only begotten son loves us enough that he gave his only life for us. So we got to be prayerful. Stick to the plan. Hang in there with your purpose of life, because you do have a purpose, you know. And your purpose is to be working, to be watching, and to be waiting, and to be faithful for our Lord's return. He's coming back, church. He's coming back for those who are going to be faithful. He's coming back for those who are working. James say works without faith is dead, so we got to go hand in hand. So he's coming back for the believer and the church without a spot or a wrinkle. May God keep you. May God bless you and continue to keep you in our prayers. Amen. Amen, amen. 
We thank God, Reverend Houston, for that mighty word of God. Let's get ready right now. Uh, it's time out for that procrastination. And, um, I'm going to start back going to church as soon as the COVID over or uh, as soon as I get this job and change my hours, I'm going I'm to start, I'm going to go back to church and give my life to Christ and go wholeheartedly. Tomorrow is not promised. He just said that. Tomorrow is not promised. God forbid we could step out into the street right now and God forbid a, a bus would run over us. Death is everywhere. Sickness is everywhere. Straighten out your business with the Lord. That's the key. So thank him again for that mighty word uh, uh, from God. Let us pray. Our Father, our God, we come to you once again. Thank you for your word, Lord. Thank you for being so holy and so merciful. Thank you for the man of God that, that brought your word without compromise. Father, we lift up the, the sick and the shut-in list. We continue to pray for the, all the COVID victims and patients, uh, the first responders, the nurses, the doctors, the paramedics. Keep your heads around them because they have to return back to their they homes. So, Lord, just thank you. Thank you for being you. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen.